Let's not stand on ceremony here. Mr. Wayne. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 greatest Batman villains. Night, I mean to pay back the man who ruined my life. Our lives. For this list, we're looking at the Dark Knight's best adversaries. As much as we love Harley and Selina, we won't be including villains that are more on the anti-hero side. Did your favorite villain make the list? Let us know in the comments. Number 20. Hugo Strange Your relaxation therapy doesn't seem to be working too well on me, Dr. Strange. The first session is off times dramatic. We will continue tomorrow, yes? Before the Joker, Batman had to deal with another demented egomaniac. Professor Hugo Strange first appeared in Detective Comics number 36 in 1940. Although he has a loose grasp on sanity, he's also a genius. The criminal scientist was the first to discover Batman's true identity as Bruce Wayne. In the animated series, Strange even attempted to auction off the mask revealed to the highest bidder. I have here incontestable proof of Batman's secret identity. Now, gentlemen, how much am I bid? The villain first appeared in live action on Gotham thanks to B.D. Wong. Strange serves as the chief of psychiatry at Arkham Asylum, while overseeing where he conducts experiments on superhumans. In every continuity, his mask of genius allows him to get away with intellectual and complex crimes that constantly give Batman a headache. Here at Arkham, we have a number of intensive treatment programs. I am more than confident that we'll be able to facilitate your rehabilitation. Number 19, Mad Hatter. You're mighty in Gotham, Batman, but in Wonderland, the Mad Hatter reigns supreme. <laughs> Jervis Tetch is known for his affinity for mind control and Lewis Carroll's Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. In one world, he's a shy scientist at Wayne Industries. After becoming obsessed with his secretary Alice, he uses mind control chipped cards to turn her and his enemies into mindless robots. There's also a live-action version of the character who uses his background as a professional hypnotist to control the minds of unlucky Gothamites. If you let me leave with my dear sister, my dear Alice, then I'll free you from that nasty little impulse. He often employs the terrible tweeds as muscle that Batman often has to deal with. If you think a guy who's a little too into Alice in Wonderland isn't a threat, just talk to one of his many mentally scarred victims. I don't know what I would ever do if I lost you. That connection, it keeps me sane. Number 18, Deadshot. Waller. What, Lawton? Play fair and I'll shoot straight. Jerk me around and I'll kill you. The deadly marksman who never misses first appeared in 1950's Batman number 59. Deadshot, oddly dressed in a tuxedo and top hat, arrived in Gotham City as a new vigilante crime fighter. His true aim was to become a new kingpin of crime. It's over, Deadshot. I don't want to do this in front of your daughter. After the dynamic duo locked him up, he became more known as a hired assassin with a much better outfit. Deadshot's incredible skill with weapons and off-the-charts accuracy has the Dark Knight wary of stepping into his crosshairs. Fortunately, the villain is often drafted onto Task Force X to solve problems for Amanda Waller. But whenever he crosses paths with Batman on a mission, you can bet that the bullets will fly. Talk! Why are you here? Amanda Waller wanted the Riddler dead. Waller. Number 17, Killer Croc. Terrific. Just what I need now. The freak job in the cape. You're no prize yourself. Killer Croc, aka Waylon Jones, suffered from a rare genetic condition that gave him rougher than normal skin. Over time, he becomes more animalistic in nature. Batman has unfortunately been on the wrong end of Killer Croc's teeth more than once. Thanks to his inhuman strength and endurance, overpowering him is no easy feat. Batman usually has to rely on his wits to come up with ways to stop him before the villain can find more prey. But Killer Croc has also been seen through a sympathetic lens as a desperate man rejected by society. I wanted you to sweat it out in a cell for a while like I did. 
to know what it feels like the way I do. Whether he's portrayed as a lonely man or an all-out beast, the caped crusader generally tries to avoid going for a swim with this villain. They used to call Killer Trot the meanest dude in the wrestling federation. Now they'll call him the guy who iced the Batman. Number 16, Black Mask. Man of Gotham, I have funded you. I've protected you. I've scratched your backs and kept you out of jail. Just like Bruce, Roman Sionis came from a wealthy Gotham family. But thanks to awful and self-absorbed parents and bad business decisions, the villain dove off the deep end. I know what everyone says. Here comes Roman Sionis. He was handed life on a silver spoon. Gin and tonics at five, all of the duck, blah, 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 fake. Sionis slayed his parents and used pieces of his dad's casket to create his iconic black mask. The villain and his false face society quickly grew into a huge problem for Gotham. And since Sionis has severe anger issues, standing near him feels like hanging around a bomb that can explode at any time. Black Mask's intimidating look and personality are a constant reminder of what Batman would have become had circumstances been darker. While Bruce uses his money to better Gotham, Sionis uses his wealth to bring Gotham down to his twisted level. What have I got to show for? My own men in the slammer? I'm no more. No, tonight, we're making some changes. Number 15, Deathstroke. You're going to keep stealing, Robin. And you're going to keep getting that thrill. And sooner or later, you will see things my way. Slade Wilson was a high-ranking member of the U.S. Army before he underwent experiments that turned him into a super soldier. He eventually began a secret career as a mercenary called Deathstroke. Since Wilson has incredible intelligence, enhanced physical abilities, and mastery of a wide range of weapons, he is an absolute nightmare for the Bat and his allies. I know your family is very anxious for you to complete your work. And I will, soon. Make it happen, Dr. Langstrom. It will be best for everyone if you do. Deathstroke has a long history of targeting Robins specifically. His cold and calculating nature allows him to come up with long-term plans that whittle his enemies down physically and mentally. By the time Deathstroke comes to finish off most targets, they've often already lost. Fortunately, Batman and his allies have the courage and strength to keep this mercenary from collecting his latest bounty. Another day, Robin. Another day. Number 14, Hush. Are you here already? What are you talking about? What do you mean, what am I talking about? Hush. Before Tommy Elliot became a brilliant surgeon, he was a childhood friend of Bruce Wayne. But the two could not have been more different underneath the surface. After Bruce got in his way several times, Tommy grew obsessed with bringing down the Dark Knight. In several realities, Elliot wrapped bandages around his head and operated as the villain Hush. I take it you're here to stop me? What do you think? I think you're too late. You're a killer, a psychopath. I will stop you. Since the antagonist often knows his old friend is Batman, he can mess with both of Wayne's identities. There are versions of the character who have even surgically modified their face to take Bruce's place in public. Hush's obsessive nature, willingness to do anything to hurt the hero, and knowledge of the Caped Crusader's identity have made him a villain who's very capable of silencing the Bat. I don't care if you do. <gasps> Wayne will suffer, and you will not stop me. Number 13, The Court of Owls and the Talons. Beware the Court of Owls that watches all the time, gazing from the shadows. Behind cement and lime. The Court of Owls mainly consists of members of Gotham's wealthiest and oldest families. They often use violent means to keep the city under their powerful influence. While Bruce avoids being recruited by the sinister society, Batman has to deal with the court's chosen talons. These lethal assassins excel at bringing down anyone that offends the Owls. Welcome, Batman, to the Court of Owls. We've been expecting you. What makes the court and their talons so impressive as Batman foes is how important they've become in a short time. After first appearing in 2011, the court has played vital roles in everything from animated movies to live-action storylines. 
Unfortunately for Bruce, it doesn't look like the owls will fly away anytime soon. The ruling council has decided to suspend all court activity in order to focus our attention on the preparations at hand. Gotham's judgment is imminent. Number 12, Clayface. The role of this mud monster has been played by many people who have a variety of powerful abilities. However, the version of the character most fans are familiar with was an actor who encounters a special substance that allows him to shapeshift at will. But his transformation often leaves him stuck in a mud-like base form. It won't work. Don't you see? It's too hard. It's like tensing a muscle. I can't keep it up for long. My career, life, it is gone. Clayface's ability to become virtually whoever and whatever he wants makes it extremely easy for him to hide from the world's greatest detective. If that wasn't bad enough, he can alter his size and shrug off blows that would easily take down most foes. While Clayface is capable of playing many roles, his most famous job is being one of Batman's most difficult enemies. Hagen, listen to me. There is no Hagen. It's only me now. Clayface. Number 11, Victor Zaz. This is nice. He's still conscious. He still feel? One of Batman's most deranged foes is unquestionably Victor Zaz. This supervillain likes to keep count of how many people he's slain by making new scars. And if you glance at Zaz's body for more than a few seconds, you might be horrified about how many he has. I'm saving a special spot for you. Right here. Unlike other Batman adversaries, this villain doesn't wear a colorful costume or plan many theatrical schemes. Zaz is quite simply a man who loves increasing his body and scar counts for money and pleasure. This villain has been a hired hitman for many of Gotham's worst criminals over the years. Every time Zaz shows up in the city, Batman and his allies unfortunately know just how the villain got all of his scars. I'm not in the mood tonight, Zaz. <laughs> Number 10, Joe Chill. I can even the score for you with Thomas Wayne. He's the reason you're in here, not me. I'll make sure he suffers, him and his whole family. We've seen it time and time again. The pearls, the bullets, the fleeing gunmen. But the man behind the gun that typically ends Thomas and Martha Wayne's lives is often overlooked. Depending on the adaptation, Joe Chill is anything from a common crook to a hitman. Whatever his formal profession or backstory may be, he is ultimately the one who fires on the Waynes. You are the slinking coward who murdered Thomas and Martha Wayne. That was a lifetime ago. The criminal's brutal actions inspire Bruce to don the cape and cowl as Gotham's hero. While Chill initially gets away, he often pays a terrible price for his crimes later on. No matter how the villain's life ends, he's commonly the one there when Batman begins. Funny. He goes, I started you off as Batman. Those other mugs made me pay. Number nine. The Penguin. You're an unstable lunatic, Penguin, and people are going to see right through you. I've got the judges, the unions, the GCPD, and a whole team of legal experts behind me. What do you got? I have me. To the surprise of many Gothamites, Oswald Cobblepot became one of Gotham City's most prolific gangsters. Whether he has bird-like features or just wears black and white, enemies typically underestimate him and think calling him Penguin was funny. But Cobblepot's actually a master manipulator who knows the value of information. He can easily blackmail others or use gossip to set enemies against each other. To govern this city, one should be legally elected, which is why I, Oswald Cobblepot, announce my candidacy for the office of mayor. And I demand, and the people demand, that an emergency election be held Forthwith. While Penguin isn't a physical match for Batman, the villain has plenty of tricks up his suit sleeves. Cobblepot can utilize trick umbrellas, hire thugs to fight the Dark Knight, or concoct a long-term plan that puts him on top. While people still might assume Penguin is harmless at first glance, Batman will never make that mistake. What do you want? Ah, oh, the direct approach. I admire that in a man with a mask. <laughs> Number eight, Scarecrow. Would you like to see my mask? 
pays in my experiments. I'm probably not very frightening to a guy like you. Jonathan Crane's childhood trauma made him obsessed with fear and the idea that he could control it one day. While he was ruining his reputation by experimenting on people, he developed a fear toxin. This hallucinogenic drug makes even Batman's worst nightmares feel extremely real. Since the Dark Knight also uses fear as a weapon, Scarecrow is his perfect psychological match. Oh, having trouble. Take a seat, have a drink. You look like a man who takes himself too seriously. Crane is a big enough threat when he just has his fear toxin and creepy mask, but there are some versions that choose to become even more dangerous by wielding themed weapons like scythes. Each and every time an armed or unarmed scarecrow shows up in Gotham, Batman is tasked with overcoming fear itself. Hold still. This will sting a bit. Number 7. The Riddler. Can you rephrase that in the form of a riddle? There was no riddle. That's the point. Maybe I'm trying something new. One of Batman's best known villains is Edward Nigma. He's the man with all the answers and the questions. Well, more specifically, riddles. But don't let his seemingly silly love for brain teasers fool you. While the Riddler isn't the most intimidating rogue to look at, a few of his twisted schemes have left Batman puzzled. The narcissistic megalomaniac Nigma likes to use his genius to come up with puzzles that put others in great peril. And I'll be one step closer to introducing myself to Gotham. Once and for all. He doesn't care who gets hurt in his pursuit to prove that he is one of the smartest people in Gotham. In some iterations, Riddler becomes smart enough to figure out who Batman really is. There's really no question as to why Nigma is such a problem for the world's greatest detective. You tell riddles a fifth grader could solve and you call yourself the Riddler. The sheer lack of imagination is staggering. You take that back! A one gimmick hack. The joke of the underworld. Damn you! Shut up! Number 6. Two-Face. Harvey Dent was once a successful district attorney that was close to Bruce Wayne and Jim Gordon. While the legal-minded man's noble efforts earned him public adoration, he secretly had a dark side. In many versions of his story, the suppressed anger Dent kept contained for years boils to the surface when half his face is scarred. He soon becomes a dichotomous villain named Two-Face, who leaves both mundane and brutal decisions up to the flip of a coin. You're a lucky man. He's not. Who? Your driver. What makes this villain stand out in Batman's rogues gallery is his truly tragic journey. Although he wanted to save the city, his suffering turned him into one of Gotham's biggest threats. Batman's reminded of the dear ally he lost whenever he looks at Dent's face. It's not about what I want. It's about what's fair! Number 5. Poison Ivy. You're going back to Arkham Ivy. Oh. Is Batman your new boy toy? While the alluring Poison Ivy insists that she only wants to save the environment, Batman knows that she's one of his deadliest foes. She often sees humanity as an obstacle in her goal to save nature. When Poison Ivy isn't using her masterful ability to command plant life, she's utilizing her powerful pheromones to control people's behavior. Don't worry yourself with anyone or anything, except pleasing me. Now bring me my money. She can ensure that everyone from the Dark Knight to the Man of Steel does what she wants. And Poison Ivy's incredible power set makes it very difficult for Batman to fight her. Although she absolutely does not need help, she has a habit of teaming up with fellow villains and antiheroes. Poison Ivy has definitely blossomed into a supervillain we can't take our eyes off of. Let her go! Number 4. Mr. Freeze Rest well, my love. The monster who took you from me will soon learn that revenge is a dish best served cold. Mr. Freeze has one of the saddest origins of any Batman adversary. In many continuities, cryogenic scientist Victor Freeze is completely focused on finding a cure for his terminally ill wife Nora. After cryogenically freezing her to preserve her life, he has an accident with icy chemicals that requires him to wear a special suit to survive. 
Mr. Freeze's desperate need for money and quests for revenge against old enemies causes him to run into Batman countless times. This is a personal vendetta. It doesn't concern you. It's my concern now. Since you ally yourself with my enemies, you leave me no choice. However, the Dark Knight frequently wants to help instead of hurt the Doctor. Although Freeze has occasionally worked with Batman, the Doctor's desire to do anything for Nora always wins out. This tragic antagonist will embrace the darkness if it means saving his wife. I can only beg your forgiveness and pray you hear me somehow, someplace. Number 3. Ra's al Ghul Here is your legacy, Damien. Here is your inheritance. The League of Assassins. Serving as the mystical leader of the League of Assassins, Ra's al Ghul seeks to eradicate humanity's evil. Unfortunately, he believes fixing the world is worth destroying institutions, cities, and people. Variants of Ra's tend to have centuries added to their lives after bathing in Lazarus pits. This act has given the villain plenty of time to master martial arts that worry Batman. Despite constantly clashing with the Bat, Ra's al Ghul respects the hero. My admiration for you was well-founded, Detective. Too bad I can't say the same. Shall I dispatch him, Master? No. The League of Assassins leader even wanted Batman as his successor. But the closest Ra's got was seeing his daughter Talia and Bruce have a son named Damien. Unsurprisingly, the boy's birth didn't fix everything. As long as Ra's evil plots put innocent lives in danger, Batman will stop him. Perhaps, Detective, it is time that you and I finally finish this. It is the only chance you will have to stop that satellite. Number 2. Bane Theatricality and deception. Powerful agents to the uninitiated. But we are initiated, aren't we, Bruce? Members of the League of Shadows. The man famous for breaking the bat is often the bane of Batman's existence. This villain's path to evil started when he was forced to grow up in a brutal prison to pay for his father's crimes. After spending years sharpening his body and mind, he took part in experiments for a drug known as Venom. <laughs> Stupid old bat. My venom is stronger. This substance improved his physical strength so much that he became a gigantic problem for most heroes. Although Batman can get around Bane's massive muscles, that's only half the equation. Since the villain's brain is as big as his biceps, the Dark Knight always has to be careful to avoid falling into a psychological trap. We don't think this villain will be satisfied until he permanently breaks the bat. Tell me where the traitor is. Then you have my permission to die. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The Joker I don't want to kill you. What would I do without you? Go back to ripping off mob dealers? No, 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 you, you complete me. Was there ever any doubt that the Clown Prince of Crime would stand at the top? Batman's greatest enemy has presented himself as a campy prankster, a crime kingpin, a trigger-happy maniac, and more over time. But Joker's one constant in every adaptation is that he is highly unpredictable. As Joker commits unspeakable crimes, Batman is always unsure whether the clown wants to torment Bruce, decimate Gotham, or just have fun. Silly goose, it's all a joke! Everything anybody's ever valued or struggled for, it's monstrous! Why can't you see the funny side? Why aren't you laughing? The fact that the supervillain's true origins are usually unknown makes him even scarier. Throughout the years, everyone from Mark Hamill to Heath Ledger has given us iconic takes on the character. The Joker's wild nature and fascinating relationship with Batman make him into a supervillain that always puts a smile on our faces. I think you and I are destined to do this forever. You'll be in a better jail forever. Maybe we could share one. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.